This is the third lesson of the series step-by-step -step palm flute lessons with Stefan Stanchu, me. Today we are talking about staccato and legato, how to play them and how it's possible to play with palm flute, different kind of accents and stuff like that. In the last video we tried a little bit of tonguing, if you remember the who, to, do, and the differences and how to play them and these are quite the basic elements how we deal with staccato and legato from now on. I think we should start with staccato because that's the easiest way in my opinion to play with palm flute and many other instruments. A staccato is a note that is sharp and stingy and also it's separated from other notes. So until now we have learned how to play who, do, and tu. We just now start to play tu, 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 tu. And then we just going to make it shorter one. Tu. Tu, tu, tu. And as you notice when you're saying tu, 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 you're taking your tongue back to the teeth and it gets smaller. And notice that you have to use also a little bit of diaphragm so you get the best result. So it's like tu, tu, tu. And this is quite already a good staccato. We could make it even a little sharper. So just emphasizing everything more and trying to make a smaller, tinier length note. I'm taking my tongue back to the teeth immediately. Tu, tu, tu. And the diaphragm is all the way activated. So, now we are a little bit more familiar with staccato. And the opposite of staccato is legato. And legato is a smooth flowing manner to play. And between the notes there aren't any pauses, any breaks. I think that uh, I could show you the best what legato is, not with palm flute, but for instance with this tin flute. So the thing is that as I blow to this flute, I tone only the first note and the rest is just the same long note that is air flowing. So I tone only the first note. So not like this, not toning every note. first one and then just letting the airstream go. Let's do also with this flute the difference between legato and staccato. Legato. Staccato. Or, for instance, and we are back with palm flute 
and we shall try the same thing as with flute. So staccato is, in my opinion, pretty easy as long as you know how to make it two, two, two. Or if you choose and it suits better for you, ta, 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 ti, 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 te, 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 do as you wish. Let's try. But with legato, in the same manner as I did with flute, that's pretty much way harder. So I will try now to make the same melody with the same technique. I will just tone the first note and that's all. So, in a way, it's possible and it sounds okay. But there are so many times that this isn't possible. For instance, if you have tilting a lot, it's just not possible. If you wanted to play... sounds different of course it depends what you're looking for and how you want it to sound but for instance if we are talking about classical music that wouldn't be suitable for so many eras of classical music probably yes to modern music but let's think about for instance Mozart and you should play like this sound good. It's not in the style. So you should play. And what did I do now here? I played more slurred in a way that I used instead of tu, I used du. So my tone went way up. Du, 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 du. And I toned every tone, but still it sounded more legato than, for instance, staccato or the normal way that we are playing. And the main issue in legato and how did I play was that you should have really good diaphragm, really good technique of blowing, so that you're able to keep this legato style and keep the tuning in the same position. If you don't have your technique in a good shape, then it would be a problematic, for instance, with the pitch. So, if you don't have it, enough air, or for instance, when you are playing a long line. pitch is getting lower because you don't have enough airstream and your pressure is getting lower. I will now make a little bit harder the melody so you can notice the differences. So let's make again with staccato. Then the legato with slurring, because I'm just taking on only the first note with tongue. As you can notice 
here. My hands are making the most work and wrists also. And then my head is just a little bit helping. And here is very helpful that you just your movements are pretty fast from tube to another. So try to uh, give to the tube that you are playing as long as possible and then you just jump fast and start the tone with do. So this last one was the most common way of playing legato with palm flute. And you can also add, there are some places where you can add without tonguing. So just making of these two options in the, some way in the middle. So let's try that one also. To be successful with this, you have to have in a well-shaped diaphragm. You have to have in a good shape also your lungs and how long can you keep the airstream going on. So I suggest to you train a lot long notes. important things which I have said already in the past lesson so when you are playing legato or staccato it doesn't matter you have jumps or you're just playing from two to another remember be like a train on the tracks like a train on the tracks never let it go Let's watch again the pictures made by Pia Suri with the tu and do. In tu, we hit with the tongue somewhere between gums and upper teeth. And do, way up higher. The higher you go, the smoother the sound will be. Do, 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 do. One more thing before we're gonna play you some examples and duos and uh, also maybe with you. When you are playing the palm flute, remember to respect every music style that you play. So let's say if you are playing uh, pop music, electronic music or folk music, everything that you have learned and will be learning might be okay to use. So it might be okay to use different kind of staccatos, different kind of legatos, making slurs or making pitch bending. But let's say if you're playing classical music, then you have to respect the style. You have to know what kind of vibrato it would be suitable where and is pitch bending okay or slurry okay. So let's say about contemporary music, that's a little bit might be more free because if the composer says that hey make pitch bending here you shall do it but if you're playing let's say mozart or bach then you should know how to play it there isn't pitch bendings you have to have different kind of vibratos that suits you can't use the same let's say folkloric vibrato to these styles i would suggest to you to try to listen as much as possible to different instrumentalists like flutists, oboists, bassoon players, violinists and try to suck the knowledge and the style. And I also would suggest you taking some lessons from 
flute players, classical musicians that know how to teach you the style. The style, for instance, how to play Mozart. They wouldn't say about the technique because, of course, they don't know about the pamphlet technique. They are so different two instruments, but the styles, so that how is it possible for you to play as much as it would be correctly played in that style. I started to play classical music at the age of 14 with the flute and a couple of years later I also added oboe. From music institute I went to conservatoire and from there to music universities and all these schools I had teachers like flute teachers and oboe and also chamber music teachers that taught me how to respect these classical music styles and also how to play so that it sounds as good as possible. How would palm flute be played so that it's suitable for Bach's music for instance. I started to play classical music at the age of 14 with the flute. And after that, a couple of years later, I started also with oboe. From music institute to conservatoire and from there to music universities, I took lessons from many teachers like flute teacher, oboe teacher and uh, chamber music teachers. And they all taught me how to play with palm flute in a way that it's suitable to different classical music styles. How to respect all those styles. I'm not saying that you should take the same path as I have had, but if you have any questions, any problems, try to solve them, try to find teachers, try to find musicians who know, who can help you. You can even write it down here in the comment section and we maybe could solve this together. After this package of uh, about a dozen of lessons, I will make new videos these videos will be also including you. So if you are sending me an email, commenting here or sending video, I will collect all these and making new videos and then we shall try to solve together the problems. In the same time, if there is another pamphletist with the same problem as you, he or she will learn from that. Okay, I'm gonna stop the lecturing here and uh, we're gonna start playing some tunes. Okay then, we shall play now Good Morning, a duet for two palm flutes. And we're gonna play it with bass... Come on, Stefan. We're gonna play it with bass palm flutes, so we are octave lower if you are playing the alto palm flute. And we are not going to play the repetitions. Let's play some reindeer polka. Notice that there are dots and lines. 
staccato notes and tenuto lines. I just wanted to emphasize that those tenuto are way longer than staccato. Let's play. notice in the sheet music there isn't any staccato markings or legato or tenuto so let's make our own version now let's start with regular two 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 then in the repetition two 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 staccato then in the ninth bar back to the regular and in the 17th we're gonna take legato 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 let's go good for training legato. As you can see there's also written play legato. You could also have legato arches. <laughs> 